have come out is to, you know, why the change? Because we were weird girls and we were weirdlings. And this past year, we've gone through a lot of changes based around that. Why did we make the change from weird girls to weirdlings? And that has been quite the fun thing. If you guys have ever done a branding change or been involved in anything like that, it is a pain in the hot and holy ass. Like you would not believe. And there are hot and holy asses out there. Um... But, and we'll give you the short version on that. Um, going into Weird Girls, we've been doing this for a few years now. I've been doing this for, I've been in the digital space for quite a while. I actually started doing digital content online five, six years ago. Um, started this about three years ago. Um, That's actually where I met Bernie and everybody in Rooster Teeth three years, I'm sorry, like five or six years ago when I started doing my original content. Um, we started this to originally build up for a scripted series called The Weird Girls. We created the channel, Weird Girls, and started creating content that would act as a supplement to the scripted series. Well, as we're trying to get funding for this, and as we're trying to let people know what we're doing and the kind of stuff we want to promote, which is a safe space for people of all genders, of all alignments, anything you want, where you can really be safe and talk about your joys and your fandoms, who are going to talk to people about that, half of my conversation is convincing them that we're not porn. <laughs> It gets old after a while. It's also a real pain when you're trying to talk to producers or other creators who you want to work with, and you have to convince them that, no, 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 we're not porn. <laughs> Promise. We're not porn. That's a real fun conversation to have with parents of young girls who you want to watch your content. Oh, my goodness, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Imagine Mark coming up to your you know, 12-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, little girl, Hi, would you like I got to a YouTube part? series for you, ha huh? Don't touch your butthole, ha huh? <laughs> It's like that. <laughs> it's, it is really... Oh, boy. It is really interesting because, like, you know, I tell people weird girls, and they're like, oh, well, you're like, is it like a suicide <laughs> girls thing? Which, no, it's not. It, that we do... I have had an episode where we talked about comic book porn, but this is not comic book porn. Like, it's not the same thing. So it is kind of a nice thing to not have to explain to My people My favorite anymore. thing was honestly having to explain it on Tinder. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Because they'd be like, oh, God, spam. I yeah. wish you would just do a show about Tinder. <laughs> you really should. do a show about Tinder. You really That'd should. I could. I have a Tumblr, by the way. <laughs> my, my geeky Tinder profile. Tinderlytrope.tumblr.com. Go check it out. There's a Yay. guy who likes to be put in cast. Just cast. That's it. That's his only thing. That's normal. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So, <laughs> we, we have a tendency to go off on tangents. Um, if at any point we do that and you guys are like, shut up, just be like, tangent, and we'll get on with the whole thing. Or if you love it, we'll keep talking on tangents. I don't care. Um, but yeah, it is, it is kind of a weird situation to where we are going up to. And actually, at VidCon a couple of years ago, I was talking to some of the people. I don't know if you guys ever watched Kids React. Anybody know Kids React? I I love Kids React too, and uh, at VidCon a couple of years ago, I was talking to some of them, and I was talking to some of the girls on the channel because we wanted to like look at that, and the look on their faces when I said, "Oh yeah, we're with weird girls," like uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we couldn't keep it up. We just had to make the change. So we actually had YouTube contact us about our channel and wanted to do some stuff, and that will happen if you're on YouTube and you start developing some things. They'll look at their analytics and they will reach out to channels to help these channels grow. And at the beginning of the year, they contacted me. And we're like, we want to work with you. We want to talk to you about your channel and see what's working. And they had some great feedback. Things were working great. Things were amazing and we have to keep doing and great, awesome. We'll keep doing that. And then one of the things they said was like, yeah, your name. So, yeah, we, we sent out a bunch of surveys and we finally made the decision that it was in the best interest of the growth of the channel to change our name. How do you guys feel about that? I love our new name. I don't know. I do. I love our new name so much. It's really cute. And I think that um, what we're trying to do is, you know, bring in all kinds of people. And um, as much as I would love for everything in the world to be like Battlestar Galactica and everybody is Sir, um, like it's, <laughs> I, I don't, um, I think it bring, makes people feel more welcome. Yeah. Um, a lot of the feedback that we got when we were still weird girls was, from guys saying, well, can I be a weird girl? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, because we started saying it was a gender neutral term because, you know, we 
we want male involvement for sure. Like I think the the original idea behind it was giving us a sort of gender designation so that we could, you know, focus on the fact that yes, there are female nerds out there, there are female gamers, you know, like comic book readers. All of that can be female too, but I think we've gotten to a place where we can drop that and we can like include everybody and not have to specify, oh yeah, by the way, we're female. You know? <laughs> like, we're not girls anymore, we're <coughs> women. Well yeah. And I mean I, I had to make an entire <laughs> video addressing the fact that I was involved with the channel. Because yeah. yeah. we had some people that were actually getting on the channel saying like, I just don't think I subscribe because there's a dude on this channel. It's like <laughs> what's wrong with you? But why? And the, so we, we've had a lot of discussions about that. And I am like the only guy except for Brandon on the channel. But apparently that was, like, I'm, giving, I'm giving you love. You're a dude. Um, congratulations, Brandon. You're a dude. <laughs> I did it. Finally. Uh, yay, today's your day. Um, here's the fun part of all this, though. We, it has been painful. We have lost some contributors, partially because of this, because we have made some other changes for the channel. But when you look objectively at what we've done, if I go into my analytics on all of our sites and primarily our YouTube, because we are primarily focused on YouTube and video right now, we've seen a 20% to 15% increase on every single metric since we've made the change. I mean, that we're, we're still tiny tubers. We're not PewDiePie. Who is, really? Is anybody ever going to be PewDiePie? Grace Helbig. What's that? Grace Helbig. Grace Helbig. But Grace Helbig doesn't even have PewDiePie numbers. I'm yeah, sorry. One day true. he'll name his successor. <laughs> <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things, from a business perspective, I cannot argue with 20% growth. I just can't do it. And that was one of the things that was big for us this past year is where are we going as a channel? What's the next step? We've grown to a certain point. What's next for us? And what's next for us is taking that next step into becoming a sustainable production house where we can consistently do this. And that's kind of our goal. And it has been a struggle. It's been a struggle. How many of you guys that are making videos are making money off of them? Oh, you. We're talking to you later. And we're going to steal everything you've done. Yay! Just so you've done. Would you like to be weird girls too? <laughs> there is no escape. There is no zero escape. escape. But we do have some stuff that we are working on, and we're doing a lot going in here um, in the future. We are about to start, hopefully, a very lucrative deal with DFTBA Records. I don't know if you guys know DFTBA at all. Anybody? DFTBA is Hank and John Green's uh, merchandise arm. Hank and John Green being the Vlog Brothers, who have been huge on uh, YouTube for a while. Um, being on staff at VidCon, I was able to sit down and talk with the guys for a while, and we're going to do a pre-sell test run of some merchandise. We are going to do... Swear cat t-shirts. Yay. Ah, ah, ah. We're very excited about swear cat t-shirts. So we'll see how that goes. We've got a lot of other things we're working on. Um, so yeah, uh, guys, is there anything, because I know that we've talked a lot about coming in here and I've monopolized all the time so far. What specifically do you guys want to talk about before we start opening up to people for questions and things? I could talk about written content. Let's do that because one thing that we've, before you do that, why are we getting into a website? We're primarily video. Why are we getting into a website? Um, in the current media landscape, it is real important you have your own home. Um, if you depend on YouTube, you have zero real connection to your subscribers. I don't have their email address. I don't have any way to contact them outside of YouTube. Um, and also, if you look at your Facebook fans, five years ago, Nobody was on Facebook. It seems weird, but nobody was on Facebook five years. Everybody's on MySpace. Who the heck is on MySpace? Nobody's on MySpace. Bands. Bands. It's all Bands. music now. Bands, which is actually, when for music, it's pretty MySpace cool. When was coming back, I was like, are you, are you fucking with me? Like, yeah, that's the thing. No, it's back. It's back, and it's pretty cool for music. Yeah. But all, if I had developed a fan base on MySpace, no. I've lost them because nobody's there anymore. So it's really important that you develop your own space online so that you can really capture your audience effectively. You can't really do that without having your own space because you're always dependent on other people. So we're working on developing our website so that we can really start to expand and own our community that's building around us. Which I should say, the Weirdling name came from our community. Our viewers and our people that were constantly part of the community became the Weirdlings. So that's why we chose that name. It wasn't just random. That was something that actually happened. So, 
along with that, like I came on with them um, after Comic Con last year. I was sitting in a panel and decided that I wanted to get involved and browbeat Mark into letting me. I remember meeting you for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dress as Dark Phoenix. NBD. It's a, it's you don't turn leather. down Dark Phoenix. Whatever. <laughs> Um, Let so me join your channel, or I'll eat your entire <laughs> yes, universe, <laughs> or I will destroy your reality. <laughs> no. Um, so um, I came on wanting to do um, written content, specifically like science content, because I'm a scientist. So um, that's where my true nerddom lies. Like I'll talk to you all day about Tony Stark, but what I'm really interested in is all the stuff that he's playing with. So um, that was like kind of my idea. But as we're getting into it. I really would like to um, be able to involve the community more. And so one of the things that we're going to start doing is we're going to start um, kind of <coughs> creating curated collections. So fans or community members that want to submit an article on something that they're passionate about or a you know, recap or critique review, something like that, comes in to me and then I can edit appropriately, you know, accept or reject, uh, so I can control qu like quality and get it out there. And so not only are you promoting yourself and getting your ideas out there, sharing them um, with a <coughs> built-in community, but we're also building content for our website. Um, so like that's my goal in the next few months, to be able to do that. That and, you know, Doctor Who is coming back, so <laughs> I'm super excited for that. Because I like Peter Capaldi. That's just me. I, I do too, actually. He's fantastic. I um, haven't actually seen any Peter Capaldi Doctor Who. Oh my Get gosh. Okay, out. so like. Uh, on Netflix yet. Uh, I know, it just came out. I have, a, I have a Google Calendar reminder in my phone. Yeah. So the short part of what Alicia said too is like, if anyone out there wants to submit content, theweirdlings.com. Submit your contributions to contributors at theweirdlings.com. Well, and we've com. had, like, in some of the YouTube comments section, we've had some really, really compelling conversations that have happened. There's no reason why those exact same conversations can't be posted on our website in article format. We're getting the engagement. We're getting the involvement. We want you guys to be as engaged and involved as you want to be. Yeah, and I really want all kinds of contributions. Like, I want you to write about science, about something cool that's happened, something that you're building. I want you to write about cosplay. I want you to write about, you know, the movies that you saw. Send me your Pixels reviews. Someone, please, oh, God, no. please do it. Uh, Maybe I, I should just make that like a, like a forum. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could, or we could do like a battle of the reviews. Battle of the reviews. Battle so of the reviews, anyway. Shannon, yeah. let's talk yeah, about you for a minute because uh, you kind of came in here a very interesting way and you've got a very interesting role here too. Yeah. This wire is weirding me out. <laughs> yeah, it's doing some weirdness. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Good. I'm Shannon. Um, and you. Huh? It's you. Uh, thanks, baby. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the social media manager. Uh, I actually got involved with Weirdlings uh, when it was Weird Girls um, via Mark posting an internship. Uh, I needed help. Needed lots of help. Uh, needed lots of help. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he hired me on, and I know within the the first month of me working uh, with Weirdlings was like me taking care of a lot of backlog on our Pinterest, uh, which meant that I got to watch a year's worth of Weirdlings content or Weird Girls content, which meant that I got to get to know everybody before I even met them. Uh, <laughs> and so that was really fun because I fangirled a little bit and I was like, oh my God, I watched all your videos, Danny. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, and that's also why I read comics now is because I watched, I spent a month watching Danny Danger uh, talk about her pull lists. So uh, I, yes, anyways. I'm like I'm much more into comics than I ever thought I would be whenever I joined. Uh, I'm I'm an, I'm an anime girl. That's why also I I joined. But it was so funny because when I like the first time I knew that I adored you was you came and like just like makeup cosplay D from Rat Queens and I was like this girl this girl you guys. It was because she wrecked it <laughs> anyway. So uh, but yeah, so um, I am in charge of the weirdlings Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, uh, Vine, Instagram. Um, I help out with the Facebook, 
uh, and really anything else. But we just downloaded Periscope, or we've tried to been we've been fiddling with Periscope. I don't understand Very Periscope. Yet, interesting guys. little platform. So I to figure that one out. Um, but yeah, and so it's a lot. It's definitely a lot more than when you think of like, oh, social media manager. I do social media all the time. I just sit on my laptop and watch Facebook and or watch Facebook. I just watch the Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and fiddle around and I tumble for a while. And this is like how I spend 10 hours of my day anyways. But no, like, mm -mm. especially when you start to develop lives and stuff like that outside of your channel, you know, you have to really you have to make sure that you're keeping up the, con the same consistency that you would have even if you, you know, were a college student for most of the time <laughs> that you're doing these things, uh, which I was. I'm no longer graduated. Hello. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, don't clap. No, blah, blah. Already got a <laughs> job and everything. Yeah, I got a job and stuff. But um, definitely the the main thing that I would say is consistency is the, is the key and streamlining all of that content to make sure that all of, uh, all of your social media um, is you know is really catered to your brand um i know that when i joined we talked about you know getting more girls involved with our audience um and so what we did with our pinterest page is we created you know fashion things so that you know fashion i created clothes to show your coolness where girls can just like find really nerdy clothes because i know that whenever i was starting off i would wear shirts that had like doctor who stuff just to see if i could find my people and so i was like well maybe you know we can find you know, more girls who like me want to do that and just find a safe place or a place where they can find more clothes to show their coolness. Um, and we also do like a closet cosplay page on our Pinterest or a board on our Pinterest that like, so that girls can get more involved in closet cosplay. Um, so we try to cater each of our social media to fit our audience so that, you know, people will want to stick around and create more of a community within those social media pages. And we've had a lot of follower growth, um, especially on our Twitter and our Pinterest, and our Tumblr, actually. We've had a lot of follower growth. And our YouTube. That's a And our YouTube. Well, yes. Yeah. But yeah, but I don't, I don't do that one. That's me. Yeah. I, kind of <laughs> I, I live on that. Um, one thing that, that I do want to touch on real quick about that is like um, each social media outlet has a completely different language. Something that works on Twitter is not going to work on Instagram. Something that works on Instagram is not necessarily going to work on Tumblr. Maybe there's a little crossover there, a little bit. But it's really important that if you really want to take advantage of these things, you've got to customize your content for the media outlet that you're streaming on. And that takes time. That you know, That's why I initially reached out and said, I need help with this because I'm editing videos. I'm managing the, the YouTube page. I don't have time for all the other six or seven social media sites we're on. So Shannon has been invaluable in letting me do that and that's also helped me get to the point where we're starting to do some more business outreach things so that's that's helping amazingly um the teamwork without it you're you're going to be stuck at some point danny you've been around the longest of anybody on the channel what have the changes been like for you i would say in in the in the beginning <laughs> in the beginning um in the beginning it was very much like a oh this is this is fun relevant to my interests and there was just a lot of enthusiasm but um you know the the motivation definitely came a lot from you and as i grew to um, figure out and enjoy it more and create my own content i was like wow this is something i'm really passionate about this is something i could move forward with and that was about the time that you and i started having conversations like where do you see this going and that was a really it was a really interesting conversation to me because i never i've always worked like a job, you know, two jobs at a time, really hard, and I kind of, um, I, I never really imagined that there would come a point where I would look at something I was doing for fun and be like, no, really, this is, this is kind of feasible. I could, I could do this if I really put my time and energy into it, and if I, if I try to, you know, logistically come at it and accomplish something, I can do this. Um, and so that was a really great, um, you know, sort of revelation to have, um, and it really encouraged me and inspired me to move forward and do more things, do all the things, you know. Um, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely been a lot of the growing pains, um, you know, having to struggle to explain the weird girls brand really takes away, um, or really took a little bit of time away from, you know, discussing my personal brand underneath the weirdlings. So I think it took, or underneath the weird girls umbrella. So I think it took, uh, it, it took a lot away from, uh, you know, building, building our personalities as a channel. Um. So that's been, re it's been really nice since we started doing the weirdlings because I don't have to, I don't have to explain that. 
and it, I feel like it's um, it's I feel like it's more marketable, honestly. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's so 100%. much more marketable. Marketable. It definitely is because like I'm I still remember being like working for Deviant Art and having to explain to people what Deviant Art was, and um, the fact that it it wasn't like sexual deviance. Porn. Like, I mean, <laughs> you had the same so problem there we might had. Be some crossover, especially when you go onto the front page and there's like inflation anime. But easy. like, you know, I was. You have to take off your your child safety locks. Yeah, basically, yeah. Right? So when the good stuff comes in. I mean, it going going to what you said. I mean, in general, from a marketing perspective, and and we are looking at this now as a business because we've reached that point. You know, we're getting you know thousands of views per video and we kind of are at that point where we need to start making decisions and we did make the decision to push forward I, you know I'm dragging them along kicking and screaming but uh, uh, that I discussion a little just a little that's true you you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have to redo all of the social media stuff Son <laughs> of a. well and, and one of the most fun parts to me hands down has been bringing on new contributors and new help because like Danielle comes at this from a completely different perspective because she's got that that fresh eye and that enthusiasm uh, that I had when I first started. Not to say that I'm not enthusiastic now, but let's say. I mean, she's kind of mellow, man. You know, if we uh, if we goad it out of her, she's very enthusiastic. She's a real introvert. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, just like seeing new contributors come on and seeing um, and and a lot of our new contributors having so many different perspectives and so many different things to add to the conversation has really been the most fun because you know you grow we grow this like a family and um and and you know and then like a family you sort of commit to being there you know when you know when you can but but we've built this family and this and this group of people that really care for each other and really care about the things that they are doing together but also having all these new ideas and different perspectives has just been really fascinating for me. And I know that in the future, I'm looking forward to the future where we collaborate a lot more, where we get our ideas streamlined and we say, okay, I really want to do this thing. You know, call up Danielle. Let's do this thing. Let's do the thing. Let's do all the things. All the things. All of the things. Um, I want to jump down to, to Brandon and Amanda real quick. Cause you guys have been pretty quiet so far. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm really kind of curious about your perspectives here because you guys are a part of the Heroes of Awesome, and yeah, I know you guys never heard it. Whatever. Come on. But <laughs> <laughs> we have now. That's right. You're gonna binge watch it. You'll, you'll binge watch. It's actually it's it's driving. Like I said, we were doing 20% growth, and I think probably 90 to 95% of our current growth is based on Heroes of Awesome to the point where we have fans that are asking us for merchandise. We have fans that are creating fan art. Um, <laughs> Which it's it's kind of crazy. Um, so the first comment from a lot of new commenters are always, "So I binge watch this. I can't wait for the next one. God, I hate waiting." Yeah, that that's kind of what we're getting. It's it's this uh, weird thing. I mean, is it weird for you guys to be so? Because it started off slow when we started the Heroes of Awesome. There was not a huge following on it, and then we did a little social media outreach, and then our first episode at like twenty five thousand views on it. And these are hour and a half long episodes. I mean, our average watch time on these hour and a half long episodes. It sounds low at 38%, but we're talking about 35 to 45 minutes that people are sitting there watching, which for YouTube is huge. Um, so we're getting really engaged audience that really love the content. I mean, what's that like for you guys to be in this burgeoning fandom that's based on you? Oh, my God. Oh, you, you just threw Amanda off completely. I know, I know. I think Amanda's, like, super uncomfortable with this. Yeah, it's weird. I really try not to think about it that hard. Um. <laughs> But I, I think the thing that makes Heroes of Awesome successful is our honesty about it. Because I knew nothing about D&D going into the show. And I'm honest about it. Like, I half the things I did on the show at the beginning, I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I, I'm doing. It's driving me crazy. But that honesty, I think, is appealing. And, you know, like, ladies or girls or guys or whatever, people who want to get into D&D, I think they feel intimidated about it. So to see that, you know, I'm having a difficult time, but at the end of the day, I'm having a lot of fun with my friends. I think that's that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and it very quickly, all four of the players on Heroes of Awesome are new. I'm the only person that had played before. So I'm running them as the dungeon master, and we got a 12-year-old girl. She's 13, thank 13 you. 13 now. She that's true, that's started. true. She just told me started. You know, so we've got... 
you know, four completely untested. Uh, but they, and you see them shaky at first, but they kind of push through and they, they start to figure it out. And now we've got, I mean, this one eats eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, we've her fan art is her and her bird eating eyeballs. I mean, this is fan art, people. It's disturbing, but she's, I mean, it's making people love her character more. So you get to kind of grow along with the characters and the players and see, you know, how their personalities. And I'm just a, I'm a jackass anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been pretty much the same every episode. Although now they think I'm cheating them on stuff, so. Well, it's because he is. I'm not. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. If you don't check the stuff, I want you to check. I'm not going to give it to you. I, it's, it's also it's nice to hear okay. that you're uh, just okay. you're also a hard ass uh, in D and D because he's also my boss at Austin Books and Comics. So this is really nice to hear that you're exactly the same person in D and D. I mean, I do more. I do more voices. Making us dance with skeletons. It's cruel. It's oh. gross. They figured that out on their own. It's yeah. cool. It's true. <laughs> That was tough, and that was early on too. So That's watching early. them, like, I give them a really random ass puzzle, and <laughs> they're like, "Well, there's music, there's skeletons. Let's dance with them." <laughs> okay, <laughs> they figured it out, but then they couldn't get their roles right for like actually dancing. So this one couldn't keep a beat. Uh, oh, I know. Like, like I he had to roll to keep a beat, so it was kind of out of his control. Exactly, it's true. But I mean, that's I mean, we can do that. I mean, we can we can roll and make dance checks in D and D. And so people watching, like, that's not a thing I would ever do in my D and D campaign. But you know, one of my favorite moments from the D and D campaign is um, the whole card game, oh, yeah. because he did a card game with an NPC with our thief, and he brought out a deck of cards, and it was going to be a simple game of war. I'm going to give you spoilers, but if you guys watch this, you're going to find it, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, that's the best thing I've ever had in my life. Um, it was a simple game of war where he was, like, dealing out cards, and she was playing these cards, and she kept losing. But what he didn't notice was while he wasn't looking, she was pocketing her high cards. And at the end of the game, he's like, all right, let's play. What She was, she was begging us to let her play. We're like, no, you're going to lose. Like, trust me. So we played again, and all of a sudden she starts throwing out all these aces. We're like, oh, my God. And we realized at that point she had pocketed the cards. It was, like, the best thing ever. It was great. I, I didn't even know. I, I was stunned. And usually I'm ready for whatever they throw at me. I mean, again, eyeball eating. And there's later <laughs> grosser stuff. <laughs> when, when Mo gross. She pulled out those aces. I thought, you cheated me in my <laughs> own game. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> We, I mean, we have a blast, and it's been really cool just watching more and more and more and more people discover it, and we, I think we do a really good job of talking to everyone. Well, yeah, going back to your original question, I think the reason that our show is doing so well is we want everybody who watches our show to be a part of the show, so we get a lot of comments, and we respond to every single one of them, and we get feedback, and we really take action on that feedback. Um, we're listening to what people have to say and responding to everything. It's, it's become a thing. We, we do live tweets every time a new show comes out. We've got more and more of our community joining in with the live tweets. Um, we've had people asking for shirts. We've had people asking for more. So we have actually made a deal with the Daily Dot. Do you guys know the Daily Dot? Um, we have made a deal with the Daily Dot. They have a small studio over here, not far, and we are going to start a new live stream adventure of the Heroes of Awesome so that we'll be doing a live stream, except... Brandon's going to play, and I'm going to DM. You son of a bitch, now's your turn. Now's your oh! turn. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, yeah. But I'm not. We, we've really responded to the community with that because they, they were asking for that. And well, we did a live unboxing video, and everyone said, like, hey, yeah. you should do the show live. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, you don't want to see the show live. It's really boring. And <laughs> they were like, oh, we really? got out a lot. And we also have a very indecisive 13-year-old girl. Mm. Yeah. But they oh. insisted, no, we really do want to see the, the workings behind it. We kind of look at each other and like, okay. Okay. And I'm going all Ovid on this shit, too. I've got like 80 pages of adventure with 24,000 square miles of map already. I did you just seen. say going all Ovid? I did. Yeah. Did you guys get that reference? Who got that reference? I love you all. You're my people. You're my people. I see you more as a moss. Moving on. Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danielle, you're one of the newest to the whole thing here. And you kind of, how did you find us in the first place? So, I'm Pira, but my name's Danielle Burpeel. Um, So, whenever... Stop laughing over there. Um, so, I met Mark through a photographer friend. He was... I moved to Austin 
to start a brand new job. I'm here alone. So I was like a small baby otaku bear just looking for my little bear family. And I started uh, stalking little Facebook groups about cosplayers and photographers and things that I'm interested in. I'm a uh, traditional 2D artist, so I wanted a place to belong. And I found a friend named Sherwin, and he was going to shoot a uh, sadly failed Christmas card thing for the weirdlings, or weird girls at the time. So I was like, can I carry lights for you? Can I go with you? I just want to see what that's like. And he was like, yeah, of course. So I walk in. They need a little bit of help setting up. I immediately jumped in. I didn't know what I was doing, but I just thought it would be good to help. And then they needed a little bit of styling help with one of uh, the, the former weird girls. And I was like, of course, I'll help. I'll do what I can. So uh, through doing that, I met Mark. And I just started pitching him some ideas. I'd been, uh, like, you know, stalking YouTubers that I idolized and adored, like Grace Halbig and Hannah Hart and Mamrie Hart. And I'd been watching them for about four years, and I was like, gosh, that'd be so cool, you know, just to be able to share something that I'm super interested in with other people. I don't really care about the view counts. I definitely don't care about money. I just think it would be great to share my love of art with people. And um, so I was talking to Mark. I pitched him a, a couple other really weird shows that I think about in my brain. Like, I am awkward when I'm not excited, and cons make me excited. So I want to talk to everybody. But whenever I'm out alone, like in the real world, when it's not con season, I'm like super in my brain and really uh, not as excited to talk to people. So I was talking to him about some really dumb coffee shop idea. He was like, mm. And I was like, well, what about if I just drew on camera? And he was like, well, what do you draw? So of course I pull out my sad, like, of course I carry it with me everywhere sketchbook. And he's like, yes, this can happen on the internet and we can make it a thing that happens. And I was like, okay. So that's why I'm here. And um, from coming, coming from a background where I am not tech savvy, I didn't own a super awesome computer. I was like a master of PowerPoint when I first came out, but when we talk about Photoshop, Premiere, Illustrator, all of the Adobe Suite situation, it was all very intimidating to me, and that was what kept me away from content contributing for so long in the first place. But coming into a group that already had like a base level support for one another, um, just coming into the weirdlings and and saying that you're interested automatically gets you an in to being like uh, cool with everybody. Just saying that you're interested makes uh, makes us interested in you right back. And so I I just found a home with them, and it was really cool because it was uh, it was a community that I didn't expect to find so quickly. And the way that they celebrate all of the different ways that all of us contribute is just so cool. We've been working a ton as a channel on communication and um, trying to get collaborations out there and really wanting to work together so that the community foundation that we have doesn't have any cracks in it so that we can put forth our best foot to you guys and so that the feedback that we're getting from you only pushes us faster. So it's really fun. Super love it. Yeah, I want to quickly touch on that because you just briefly touched on something that I think is really important um, that we learned the hard way, and I'll take full blame on it. We probably grew too fast. Our foundation was not strong enough, and there were a lot of cracks. And we've had to rebuild and reinforce our foundation, and that's what we've really spent the past several months doing. And the foundation that we've got now feels really strong. Um, the people that are working and the things that are happening, I feel really, really good about what's happening right now. And to, you know, impress on you Danielle's skill level. Her art is what got the CEO of DF DFTBA Records to be like, we should do something with you. Um, this is her, so oh, thank I, you. Oh, uh, you were very welcome. Thank you for letting me be a weirdling slash weird girl slash weirdling. Um, <laughs> it's the longest also, URL ever. I get, mm -hmm. What? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, my excitement made me not hear stuff. Um, no oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry, my bad. Okay, it's okay. Um, so while, while we're talking about the whole yeah. community thing, I, I think you actually, so one thing, one thing that we, we have done because of our foundation, you know, we have had to make some tough decisions. We have lost some contributors who have gone on. They either lost a passion for video, they wanted to pursue their own channel or whatever. 
Um, but we've also been growing as well. And I think that you had something that you wanted to ask somebody. Is that yeah, right? I do. Um, oh, here, hold on. Let me give you this. <laughs> Hi, guys. So, where? Don't, don't shine lights in her face. It's oh, really well. alarming. Guys, this is Mary. And uh, she is a really great human, and she's super adorbs with her beautiful hairs and faces and eyelashes and greats. And as we've been talking about, we've been building a brand new uh, foundation for a community that we've already had, and we have been looking feverishly for other people that we feel like are self-committed to excellence that we can also commit to. And I just think it's really amazing some of the people in the, in the community that we have. Um, people who are active in comments and chats on all different social platforms are people that inspire us to create newer, better content. And Mary has been one of like the most active commenters and uh, weirdlings that we've seen. She's also highly motivated by herself, and I think it makes for a really great content contributor. So, without further ado, Mary, <laughs> would you please be a contributor for the weirdlings? <laughs> so cute. I can't stand you. So what you all have to do now is go check out the knitting dev. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so jeez, I'm shaking. <laughs> so when my journey started in January, but I've been thinking about doing YouTube for a long time, and I went to Pack South and saw a geek girl in media and which Danny was a panelist at, and I told myself, because I couldn't ask my question publicly, that I was going to glomp the first person that came off the panel so that I could ask them, hey, I want to get started. What technology do I need to do? I had the idea. I had the plan. I just was stopping myself. So I, Danny goes, you got an iPhone? Yeah. Okay. Well, can you get a spotlight or something? Yeah. All right. That's it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the hard part is not the tech. The hard part is the motivation and the organization to con just consistently do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And she was just like, yeah, it's really, you're going to hate what you do now in six months anyway, so just start. Um, and I did, and I did that for a while and realized I burnt myself out in like four weeks because I was doing three times a week, the first time out, and taping each one of those the hour before I was editing to put them out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Trial and error. Yep. But that really got me involved in the Weirdlings community as well. And, you know, just awesome people doing awesome things. And when I was talking to Danny, I was like, Danny, do you really think I could, like, do a Weirdlings thing? Like, could that fit? I want to do programming stuff. So if you guys want to see programming, like, content, let me know because I want to hear that. I want to see, like, what that, that, that's what I do. I love to program. Right now, I'm going to pick up board gaming content, because I'm also a huge board gamer. And that um, I'm really excited to do. I love you Welcome. guys so much. Welcome. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Welcome, weirdlings. Yeah, uh, yeah welcome, welcome, weirdlings. Hashtag, 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 hashtag welcome, welcome weirdlings. weirdlings. See what I did there? OK, I'm done. So I, I have to also give, give you a ton of credit, because Mary came on board recently and has started working with us. And like I said, the foundation of our community was not strong enough as creators, she came on board and she has started automating some of our procedures and has built Slack channels for us so we can start talking to each other. And every single person up here has said that it has been invaluable. Just Guys, the connections that we're able to make with each other has just been spectacular. If you have a group and you are not con using Slack to communicate, you're missing out on a serious service. Like I said earlier, I am the least tech savvy person on this team. I do not tech well. And this, True this story. allows um, Twitter and YouTube comments to filter straight to, to you through this source so that you don't have to go through each social media platform to find these um, things that are getting sent to you. So you can respond instantly from Slack to the things that are on your Twitter, on your YouTube, on your Tumblr. And it links everything together. So let's say if me and somebody out there in the audience took a picture together, if you posted it, Slack's going to show me no matter where you posted it from and it's going to allow me to give direct response to you. So if you are a group that needs to talk to one another, like TFT back there did an amazing panel yesterday. You guys were so much fun to watch. But if you guys ever needed uh, things to help you keep in touch more than the, the 
Skype that you already do or whatever. It's amazing. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and um, I wrote, because there really wasn't a good YouTube bot out there to go to Slack. Um, just there's not a good integration and Google's API sucks. So I, uh, I wrote a bot and I'm actually working on um, open sourcing the core of that bot. If any of you guys program in Go or Ruby, I can help you guys translate that. But um, that's what I'm planning on doing so that it can be open to those who need it. I love it when she talks about coding. No, it is like a whole brand new Speak okay, Oracle to me. So um, we're at about 15 minutes. I, I want to make sure that uh, if you guys have any questions or want to talk about anything, you get a chance to make anything you want to ask or talk. Oh, before I, before I stop, some of you guys are from the forum thread, right? You guys, your panel, I didn't really talk to you all. I loved your panel the other yeah. day. Yeah, the, the stuff you said about the way you guys are building your community, I was like, oh, my God, they get it. I love these guys. I love them so much. So, yes, I'm now following. You guys are awesome. And thank you for coming to this. I really appreciate that. That's great. Um, anybody got any questions or anything you want to talk to us about? Comments, questions, concerns? Or we can just dance. Oh, my God. Blinding flashes of insight. Blinding flashes of it. Yes, question back there. You want me to bring you the mic so you can, like, yeah. hear everybody. I can dance sitting down. Yeah. I'm ready to be impressed. Gonna be blind I mean, first off, this all sounds amazing. This is the f I mean, we first heard about you guys the other day when you guys came to our panel. So Thank you. We, welcome. This all sounds amazing. I'm definitely like, checking it all out. Um, so when you guys come up with a uh, new concept for a show or something like that, what is your process? Do you guys uh, spitball with the team or do you like to try and do like a pilot or something like that? What's your general go-to process with that? It used to be, it used to be um, run it by Mark and make sure he doesn't hate it. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I, you know, like, it's one of those things when you're constantly, like, putting out ideas, you have to accept that, like, most of your ideas are either going to be terrible or are going to need a lot of work when it comes straight out of the brain. Um, so it used to be just, like, and then you started an email, and then hopefully everybody gets the email. Um, now that we've moved to Slack, like, um, you know, Shannon and I just started working on, uh, you know, doing something for Sailor Moon Day this upcoming weekend. Um, and that has, I mean, just the process of, like, just being able to talk about it and move from email and be like, okay, let's actually have a chat about this. Let's, let's spitball and go back and forth with ideas. Because it used to be we would only come up with these ideas, you know, mainly when we would see each other. And with everybody getting busier and making and doing more, the times where we can all physically get together at the same time are becoming more few Very and far limited. between. So having a, a system through which we can just hop on and chat exclusively with each other and then go back and forth and really like let ideas marinate. Yeah. I it's so been super helpful. Good. I when I started the first email I ever sent to Mark was called Idea Soup. <laughs> oh, there were ideas. <laughs> and so many ideas. It was a it very was long list of articles and um, like possible series between two cats is still going to happen. Oh my god! Oh, I want that to happen so bad. Oh my god! <gasps> okay, so my okay, best friend and I are the most horrible old married couple, and we all have cats. So between two cats, it's going to happen. But um, like we, the four of us uh, as an administrative team, we meet fairly regularly and um, discuss ideas. So we, we should evolution. just just so you know, about the administrative team. Um, oh. I, I would be the producer of the channel. She runs the website. Shannon does social media. And then Danielle handles all our merchandising and branding. So we're kind of like the intelligentsia, if you will, yeah. uh, of all that <laughs> stuff. So when she says the administrative team, that's who we're talking about right now. Yeah. So um, a lot of times people will come to us with ideas, and we kind of like decide what's feasible right now, what, what will work, what we can like just take and just run with, like um, podcasters. It's going to be very interesting. From Shannon and Danielle. Oh, yeah. We're dropping some knowledge on you guys. We're about to release our brand new podcast, Fen Service. Hopefully, uh, the very first episode will be, uh, like, shot. Since shot. it's, you know, like, <laughs> recorded. <low> sound. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. It'll be recorded. Words are Sunday. hard. <laughs> We derp. We derp <laughs> so hard. I want like a blooper reel of the derpness I'm that sorry. happens day to day. It's amazing. It's but so it, it's going to be uh, focused on anime and things like that. So I'm really excited for Danielle so and Shannon to be doing anime podcasts. Fem service, fam service, get it. Get it. Ah. Okay. So like, see what you did there. The, the long and short of it is it's kind of a group effort and it's really... Um, our, our real constraint is um, like resource. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, as long as we, you know, as long as we like an idea, even if we don't have the resources now, it's still there. Like my idea soup checklist is still there. 
Oh, and I still harass you about Between Two Cats, yep. too. You and, Sarah two need to have a show. Yes. you and Sarah need a show. That's all there's to it. Um, so angry. I will say, um, at, what, at some point, there does have to be the executive decision, and we do have to say, because sometimes this stuff won't work. And there's mm -hmm. stuff... Kill your darlings. Yes, I had to teach Danny so hard. Kill your babies. It sounds yeah. horrible. Kill your babies. I know, I it know. It feels horrible, too. It feels just as bad as saying it. Yeah, but... Um, and it there have been plenty of times when I've had to say, is like... I, you know what? That's not going to work. We can't do it. Let's put it off right now. So yeah. there does have to be that. We'll sit around and talk about it. But at the end of the day, somebody's got to make the call or else people are just throwing shit and hoping it sticks. So. One of the other things that has made the idea stuff a lot easier is that, you know, when we first started doing this, we really wanna, wanted to compartmentalize, like, I'm the comic book person and, you know, so-and-so is the this person and so-and-so is the this person, which is absolutely silly because we all have interests that overlap and especially if we want to do collabs, we shouldn't have to wait until we can find, or we shouldn't have to, like, try and smoosh them together to, to make a collab when if I have never done an episode about anime, but I really want to be in on, or if I've never done an episode where I draw, but I really get the hanker in to draw, and I think it would be really funny for, like, Danielle and I to speed draw something at the same time so you can see how horrible I am and how great she is. Like, that, I mean, that is, that's totally a thing, and there shouldn't be any barriers stopping me from doing that because at the end of the day, we need to, like, we should grow our channel and whatever feels organic and feels enthusiastic and just happens naturally should be allowed to grow and happen you know regardless of yeah. of everyone's interests so yeah. lowering barriers any more questions this is a really long interview i know i just want to say one that. thing so <laughs> one of the weird things about our channel is we do have multiple contributors all contributing to the same channel and it can be really confusing one of the challenges you have as a creator is how do you make that work and we tried originally to compartmentalize that content and it just wasn't working um, we did a really good job, um, and that's one thing YouTube like loved about our channel was how we were able to delineate each creator. If you look at our channel, you can tell by the thumbnail who's who, what they're doing, how it's working and everything, and they love that, but the compartmentalization of content was killing us. So we, we freed that up so that anybody can do anything. Let's work together. Let's make stuff together. And I think that's a big change we've made, and it's going to really help in a lot of ways. Any other questions out there? Yeah. I had a question about your rebranding. Um, just what do you think would be optimal? Is rebranding your entire name and identity or just changing it and dealing with the problems? We actually had a really, really big conversation about this um, because we rebranded our name. We didn't really rebrand our image. I mean, yes, we, we've now changed like all of our you know, URLs and all of our social media handles. God bless you, Shannon. Um, but, but, you know, and, and all of the, and there was definitely a lot of moving around, but like, if you, if you look at the website, the website still has a similar feel to it and a, and a similar concept mm -hmm. to it. It hasn't changed our content. Um, it has given us more maneuverability in terms of like slogans. And like, I used to say, you know, greetings universe or like different things to open up my video because everyone knows that introductions are the most awkward part of an, in, of, of a video. So I would say like greetings earthlings or greetings comic book fans, and now it's turned into greeting weirdlings, and I love it. Like it's just it's and that's so that's good. standard across the board. Every video starts with welcome weirdlings. Mm -hmm. And I would say like we we've changed you know our brand so to speak, well the look of our brand, the sound of it, but who we are, our mission hasn't changed at mm -hmm. all. Um, the only thing that it's done is you know opened us up more. Um, so our mission statement is still safe space for geeky, nerdy, wonderful fandom thingies. So <laughs> yeah. that's the official. Yeah. The official one. If you look at our website. That's thingies exactly. Thingies is a very scientific term, Mark. <laughs> it is. You're right. You're well, the scientist. I trust you. Yes. At the end of the day, I think we determined it's metric. it was less about it was less about fixing the problem because the way to fix the problem was to fix the name. Mm -hmm. um, Normally, like if it if it had been, we tried. We even tried. And Mark, like I feel like he was kind of hanging on there with white knuckles for a minute because he was like, "But is there anything else that we can do to make it more abundantly clear to people that we are a not a porn site and b not exclusively for girls?" And I mean, he really went around in circles trying to figure change. out a way to because it's a lot of freaking work on his part. Yeah. 
No, it's it, well, hold on. It's not. It's not the work that I didn't want to change. Yeah. It's the spirit and what we were trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I love the name. I love the story. I love how it all started. And I didn't want to change, I but I had the, to face yeah. the facts that I needed. I was to in change. the same boat because, like, I think Shannon and I both really we we felt that being gendered was so important. Um, because there are so few spaces out there for females. I mean, and and with the fappening on our brain and with, you know, the whole Gamergate stuff, like, fresh in our minds, all we could think of was we're giving up our one little gendered bit. And then, you know, we kind of stuck, you know, stepped back and we're like, but wait. But that's not going to change our content, how yeah, we feel yeah, about those things. Content. Well, yeah, and I remember, like, I know Danielle and I, whenever we were talking about naming our podcast, our anime podcast, you know, we were like, well, should we make it gender inclusive? And I remember making the point, like, well, our entire production, you know, company is now gender inclusive, but, like, why not just make something, like, just for girls? Or, like, mm -hmm. you know, just have, like, you know, reminder, like, we still do cater to women, like, femme service, like, a feminist anime podcaster, you know, just a, an anime co podcast done by girls who like anime. Like, we, we, we're still the weird girls. Like, we, you know, we're, the, we're still ladies. And so we, we <laughs> exist as the weird girls. But, <laughs> Your but, gender didn't yeah. magically yeah, yeah, yeah. change. <laughs> the, reminder, <laughs> Brandon. Brandon, Brandon's Brandon's look, like, Brandon uh, is, in uh, fact, a man. Reminder. Um, but, uh, but, no, I thought it was, it's important that, you know, some of our content still does cater to girls because we didn't want to lose that but at the same time like our entire production company is for everybody yeah. like i i will say that i do like the weirdling switch because there is like a personal part of me that uh my heart you know goes out to a lot of um gender ambiguous folks who often feel like gendering things while it's not you know while, you know, while it doesn't give them negative feelings per se it might give them the impression that we are not for them. And that's not true. Yes. We are especially for them and we are for everyone at the end of the day. And I think it was really like being at HavenCon too that was like, we need yeah, to be the weird really yeah. solidified because that for me. It's like we walked into a room where we were over capacity and it was like, oh, people were like standing almost on top of each other. Yeah, it's it was like, so great. We need to open up and make sure that they know that they're. Do like, you guys know what HavenCon is? HavenCon oh, was the first dang. LGBTQ. Uh, Comic Con, I guess you would say in the state of Texas. And that was here local. Geek Con, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Geek Con in the state of Texas. And we had a booth there and everything. Um, and it, it, it really was. I mean, this was started as to be a safe space. Uh, the, the scripted series is a story about four middle school girls. And it really was supposed to be a place be, to represent and be a safe place for girls. And we don't want to lose that. And I refuse to lose that. I've changed the name, but the content will still celebrate diversity and everything we do. Mm -hmm. End of story. Uh, do we have time for one more? Are we out of time? I get Ooh. Ooh. Yep. How do you guys feel about outros? Like, hey, check us out. Like, oh. Leave a like. Do the subscribe. <laughs> oh. Like, how? How let do you me, do that? Let me talk about Not this. awkwardly. You don't. That's how you do it. <laughs> Thank you. You just don't. Okay. I can't Outro. tell you how many times I redo my intro. Okay, guys. That was a... Oh, my God. I stared into the camera too long. Okay. Oh, my God. Hey. Oh, I said, oh, my God, again. So, oh shit, I said so. Um, oh fuck. You, she's not kidding. And then no, this is why we so have time for her cursing. Amanda, you have to answer this one. It's, it's the worst thing in the world. I hate it so <laughs> yeah. much. Like, I, I have everybody in the room, like, look the other direction when I'm doing mine. And um, one time I had, uh, I sung it to the tune of Game of Thrones. And that <laughs> actually helped a lot. That was great. We yeah. should do that every time. It was, it's the worst. <gasps> I want to hear it. Oh, my God. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 it sucks, but I mean, you do you do have to do that. It works. I mean, from the whole like thing, when you actually tell a viewer to subscribe, they'll be like, okay, and they'll click. <laughs> you you have to actually do it, and it sucks, but it works. It's like a Jedi mind trick. You will subscribe. That's true. I'm not. 
fishing for sponsorship, but it does it does actually make it easier at the end of the polis video to always be like, and a special thanks goes out to Austin Books and Comics because there is like a you know like a like a thing like I know that I have to say this. So then instead of focusing on finding a creative way to say goodbye, I find a creative way to say you know special thanks to Austin Books and Comics where there are absolutely no weeping angels. Oh my God, Mark just edited one in. I hate you. I'm a liar. <laughs> you know how long it took me to get that stupid weeping angel in that shot? Oh my God. Oh my God. It was so wonderful. Oh my God. So and it's still and I, I still had like a hour night? it's not the best <laughs> it was traumatizing i'm sorry but i was out of time I've ever i had to stream it was um, great. yeah oh I, I don't want to wrap up i'm liking talking <laughs> um look we're gonna be hanging around for a while we'd love to talk to you guys hey we got stickers can we get stickers and buttons because stickers. Stickers. Right. Right. Yeah. Stickers yeah. Stickers those have our old url they have the weird girls url so that pick them because so they're, they're cute and it still redirects weird-girls.com still goes to the weirdlings.com thanks so much uh we have twitters give us our twitters real quick so you guys can follow us oh you guys should definitely check all of us out at the weirdlings but mine is danny davarona d-a-n-i D-A-V-E-R-O-N-A. I am at Iffy Wizardry. I'm at Amanda Loon. I'm at Danny Danger. Two N's. <laughs> In the Danny, not the Danger. Spell Danger normally. Danger. <laughs> danger. <laughs> <laughs> I will only re you can only refer to me as that when I have a rapier in hand. Okay. Rapier in hand. Go. Uh, I'm at a sugar matata, which is a very strange glee sugar reference. Sugar matata. <laughs> it's a wonderful. Sorry. I'm at Saint Joan. Everything is at Saint Joan. I'm at Knitting Dev, and literally everything is at Knitting Dev. And I am Mark Gardner ATX. Thank you guys for coming out. We love to talk to you. You're so, so pretty. Much.